Uh, let's get started, everyone, please. Uh, Wendy, will you please call the roll? Council President Paul M. Roderick. Here. Vice President Thomas P. Welch. Here. Third. <laughs> Councillor Terry Flynn. Here. Councillor Christopher M. Logan. Here. Councillor M. Teresa Santos. Here. Councillor Dennis B. Toronto. Here. Councillor Barbara A. Von Villas. Here. We have a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Okay, thank you. Let's uh, let's get started. We are have a meeting tonight. Special meeting called for. Uh, we had received communication from Mr. Roberts, Charles Roberts, who is the uh, uh, head of the uh, facilities building uh, school building committee, um, looking to. Um, make a presentation to us about uh, you know some of the things that are needed and the direction they want to go we're just going to listen tonight and see what uh, see what uh, you know what you're going to say and what's what uh, what direction you think you uh, you would want the council to go in again at the end of the day we all know it comes down to dollars and cents right um, in affordability what the taxpayers can afford or not afford but we'll have to make those decisions that's down the road one thing I don't want to do is, and again, it's at the pleasure of, of, the, of my colleagues, is rush. We need to make sure that uh, if we're going to do something, or what, what, based upon the needs you present to us, um, that we do it right, that the public's well informed, and that it makes sense. And again, cost. You know, we could spend, we could put probably 50 million into these buildings and not be where we want to be. So, and that's just an arbitrary number I'm throwing out there. Um, and I only say that because we've done that with our infrastructure and uh, over time and, you know, so you do the best you can with what you have and we kind of approach it like we would our own, own homes, right? You do what you can and what makes sense and, and prioritize things. So, having said that, let me read the, uh, the, the first one into, uh, into the record. Joint meeting with Middletown Public Schools Building Committee. Number one, communication of Charlie Roberts, co-chair, uh, Middletown Public Schools Building Committee in reference to update of MPS Building Committee, letter of intent requirement for phase one. Motion received, set communication. Second. We have a motion to second receive, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Mr. Roberts. I would like to say that we would like to welcome uh, Superintendent Kreger and um, uh, Teresa Spangle, who's the, the chair, yeah. chairperson of the, well, you've changed a lot. I didn't recognize you. No, I'm just kidding. I couldn't get it out for some reason, <laughs> to be honest with you, who's the chairperson of the school committee. And we do have other school committee members here. Um, so I'll turn it over to you guys. And if you want to get started or any comments you want to make, I would say that um, if Mr. Roberts, if, uh, when you do your presentation, if any councils have any questions, um, I'll do whatever you want to do. I would just take notes and and let's get through the presentation and you can ask any questions at the end, okay? All right. Thank, thank you very much for um, having us and, and taking the opportunity to look at what the incredible team, uh, they've, what they've been working on. Um, we have an incredible team of experts, a lot of knowledge in um, engineering and architect, which is fantastic. Um, and then of course, incorporating the school professionals to be involved in this process. So I want to just thank you for the opportunity to do this and, and for your support wherever this may lead. Um, it is a community affair. Our buildings are community buildings. So this is something that's a, a really important part of the process. And it's not just the educational part of it. It's, it's the community. It's a benefit of the community. Because when we have great schools, we bring in more people that want to live here. So again, I just want to thank you for this opportunity and, and uh, I will then pass this on to the superintendent and she can introduce our building committee and go on from there. Yeah, thank you, Teresa. Thank you. <clears throat> I would just like to say, and I, I talked to Rosemary about this earlier and I talked to Wendy about it this morning. Typically when we meet like this, we like to be on the floor with the, with the, you know, and with, the, with the tables and chairs. So we're all at the same level. We couldn't do that this evening because we have um, court tomorrow. So it was easier for the staff after this meeting, depending upon how long it goes. They have to tear stuff down and they have to get up early. So I just want to make that, that a point that, because sometimes this level and that level, it's easier when you're on the same level, whether we agree or not, you know, it's for whatever it's at, okay? 
Okay, Mrs. Craigham. Okay, uh, again, just to build on what uh, Teresa has said, uh, thank you very much for organizing this workshop and on behalf of the building committee. Uh, I know everybody is busier this time of the year, but you made this a priority, and I do want to thank you uh, for that. Our facilities are at a crossroads, and it's important that we address this collectively. Uh, st the uh, state ri uh, ride has a stage one and a stage two process, and we need to do this in a timely but thoughtful and deliberate w uh, way. We need to identify the needs while the reimbursement is available to us. Uh, we recently learned that the reimbursement, depending on the types of projects that we uh, do, could be up to 90% reimbursement. Uh, you, we knew it was gonna be between 35, 45, but depending on what projects come forward in terms of priority, that would, uh, could be up to 90%. We could have the first slide and then the second. Just wanted to review the agenda and I'm going to turn it over to our uh, building committee chair. Next slide. So here is an agenda for tonight. Um, we would like to give you a little bit of history about our building committee formation and the planning team. We have many members uh, behind us and next to us who uh, have been an integral part to date on this. We'd like to provide you an update on how the monies and projects have been spent, uh, both on the bond and capital improvement. We will give you an overview of the ride process, talk a little bit about the educational planning piece of the, uh, uh, the stage one and stage two, and a facilities review. So, uh, you know, and, and again, in terms of providing you a background and the importance of the work we're doing, uh, for our students and for our families in Middletown. I, I want to be, make it very clear from the onset, we are not looking at any new facility. Uh, we are looking, upgrading our current facilities are, that are aid, aged. We need to address this uh, in, a, in terms of maintenance, preventative main, maintenance, and, upgrade, and upgrades of our old buildings and really to provide 21st century learning spaces and opportunities for our students. Next slide. Rosemary, just, I asked not to interrupt, but of course I'm the first one that interrupts. Um, could, is this available online? Because we, can, we have a copy, so yes. we can read it, but the audience can't see those, that small print. Sure. Okay. And we I just will, want to make will, sure. We will put it online. Yes. Okay. okay, excellent. Thank you. So the building committee formation and planning team. The school committee advertised for a building committee in January 2021. Uh, quickly, very quickly, our building uh, committee members uh, formed and they sent letters to us <clears throat> expressing an interest to be on the building committee. I have to tell you, in my years of experience, uh, it, as superintendent and even before, this is a fabulous building committee. They are talented, they are skilled, they are knowledgeable. And they normed very quickly. You know, usually when you bring a group together, it takes a while to go over objectives and outcomes and all, but this group just, just normed very quickly. And they've taken the charge very seriously, and you'll hear our uh, co-chair talk about it and he'll introduce our other members. They are invested, they are our Middletown taxpayers and they are invested in our community and they want uh, the, our, our buildings to be bright, cheerful, healthy, safe for the students and families of Middletown. So I'd like to introduce Charlie Roberts, uh, our co-chair and Ed Grady should be here shortly I believe and they will share a little bit about themselves and their background. So Charlie, I Thank turn you. it to you. Thank you again uh, for uh, having us today. My name is Charlie Roberts. Um, I, I did see the ad for the, this opportunity. I, I was looking for opportunities to volunteer here in town. Um, I have two children that have gone through the Milltown Public Schools and one still in there uh, going into sixth grade this year. So I have a lot of interest in this. Um, I'm a taxpayer, homeowner here on Oliphant Lane and, and 
really just uh, impressed as well with my other community members who have also joined the committee. You know, part of that ride set some standards for this committee. They wanted the community members to have engineering, construction, um, and background. And I think you'll find that, you know, some of my uh, community members here that are with me tonight, that we all have bring in different aspect to this, but at the same thing, we're all looking for the same goal um, to just make sure we give the best facilities we can for our students and our staff. So with that, um, I just want to see if a couple can introduce themselves, some of our community members, if that's all right. So, Two children, one's entering first grade at a Quidnick school and one's a preschooler. Do we have your last name again, please? Uh, Fader. Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, Bill Nash, I think I know many of you who sit up there uh, for, for a while now, but um, proud to say that uh, I am a, a product of Middletown School, proud graduate, uh, as is m uh, my family members, my brothers, uh, my wife, her brothers, who I think we all know who they are. Um, my children all graduated from Middletown High School, and I'm proud to say again, my uh, grandchildren, along with uh, Tom Welch's uh, grand grandchildren, are, are beginning school in Middletown. So I have a vested interest in uh, uh, the history of, of what's going on uh, in, in the schools. Uh, I, I've worked for the town. I think many of you know that. I, I worked in the building department for uh, 11 years. Um, I, I, I've been a code official for the state of Rhode Island for uh, 21 years, and I now work for the International Code Council. Um, so my years of construction uh, background and knowledge of planning, um, I, I hope to bring that to this committee, and I think so far we've done a fine job with the leadership uh, that we have. So I'm glad to be here and glad to give back to my community. I'm also, uh, you may know, I'm uh, a vice chair right now of the planning board. Uh, and again, giving back to my community is important to me, and uh, again, glad to be here. Thank you. My name is Ed Brady, resident of Middletown. My background has been in the area of building construction, both from standpoints of planning, design, the actual construction, and operation. My background is varied. Worked for Raytheon, City of Newport finished off at Rhode Island College as Director of Facilities, Operations, and Capital Projects. I think one other thing I want to bring to this council, this committee is made up of exactly what RIDE is asking for, for a committee. They want a solid committee with educational background, but also the people who have volunteers have been there. They have done construction. They've lived through the nightmares. There's good points to it. So I think that's important as we look at this committee. Thank you. Thank you. We have uh, one other uh, community member who couldn't make it, I don't think yet. Um, just to finish up, again, I'm Charlie. Um, I, I was in the home building industry in Colorado, Massachusetts, Rhode Island for some 10 plus years, and now I've been in the solar field for the last 15. So it's, uh, I, th I think as you saw there, there's a really diverse uh, collection of community members here with, with this committee. So. With that, um, you know, we're at the beginning of this process right now. Um, what we have asked for with this workshop and then um, for the agenda at the next town council meeting is just to sign on to a letter of intent. So that's the first, first phase of this, phase one of this application process. The hard part comes next, which is phase two, which is a lot of the work is, is gonna happen. So we, we again, thank you for your time. Um, I know we're all busy, so thank you again for, for having us. Thank you. Uh, could we have the next slide? This really shows our planning team and partners. Uh, you just heard from our building committee. Uh, next, uh, we'd like to introduce, so we will need that microphone again, uh, Colliers. Uh, they are uh, project managers, uh, owners, project managers, OPMs. Uh, RIDE requires that we have OPMs now for any projects uh, throughout the state. 
what an OPM does is they provide uh, really assistance to the school department uh, for the work on, and work with the school department and building committee to make sure that the work we're doing is quality work, that the people we engage as educa educational planners and uh, a design team are on task, are qualified, they help with the, bu uh, the, building, the building part of it, additions or renovations, whatever it might be. They help deliver, uh, the pro make sure that the project is on time and on budget. Uh, we selected Colliers because they have a, an excellent reputation in the state. Uh, when, we, when we interviewed them, we knew that they were project managers for a number of school districts where things came in on time, within budget, and quality work. So I'm going to introduce uh, the two project leaders, uh, Derek and Holly. Do you want to introduce yourselves? Hang on one sec. He's going to get you the mic. Holly to Mercoria. I'm the associate director in the Rhode Island office. Uh, as Superintendent mentioned, uh, our goal is to make sure Middletown is successful. Uh, our, the, our charge is to have the best interest of the town and, and the school department as we move through these changing projects. Thank you so much, Holly. And again, my name is Derek Osterman. I am the director of project management services for Collier's Project Leaders. Essentially, that means I lead all of our teams throughout the state of Rhode Island, and, and we're very pleased to have the opportunity to lead Middletown through this process. I, I know great things are ahead in terms of the, the capital plan that you'll be putting forward. So thank you so much. The next uh, member and part of the team is an educational planner. And in April, we, w we went out for an RFP for a special project uh, representative who would do work uh, and had vision and experience, not only in this country, but internationally, for innovation and 21st century teaching and learning. Uh, Frank Locker is the educational planner. Uh, he could not make it tonight, but again, uh, a reputation that is known throughout this state and the country and internationally. Frank also has worked with Colliers and many building committees. He's the one that does the visioning uh, sessions for us with our citizens as to where do you see our schools you know, in 10 years, in 15 years, in 20 years. And we'll, I'll give you a little more detail on that later on. The next key partner in our planning is an architect. And uh, the building, again, we went out for an RFP and the building committee really managed this work and I interviewing. We interviewed, what, three or four? Seven. Seven. Oh, we interviewed three. We had seven proposals. Okay, we had seven proposals. The building committee interviewed three um, architects and uh, recommended to the school committee DBVW architects. And again, they have a great deal of experience within the uh, state. Uh, no stage one, no stage two, know the insides and outsides of what schools uh, should be and what they are. I know we gave you a, an 11 page document that uh, Doug will go through later on, but they left no stone unturned when they uh, went through our schools. Uh, they were in all the nooks and crannies and tunnels and whatever uh, in our schools. Uh, the Jacobs report, uh, was is several years old. They did a very um, cursory uh, uh, study of our schools. There were a lot of inaccuracies in that, but we needed to do the Jacobs report to get the dollars for, for the funding, not us, for the state. Um, this is not the case with uh, this particular architects. As I said, they, they went through every nook and cranny of our schools. So uh, Doug and Ed, do you want to just introduce yourself? Sure, thank you, Rosemary. Uh, good evening. Um, my name is Doug Brown, Senior Principal of BBBW Architects. Um, a little bit about our firm. Uh, we're a 30-person firm based in Rhode Island. Been around for about 30 years now. Uh, we have a, 
uh, a number of areas of focus, but an important one is K-12 educational projects. Um, in addition, uh, another specialty of ours is uh, adaptive reuse uh, of buildings. And, and I'm mentioning that because we uh, spend a lot of time in our practice um, uh, evaluating older buildings, recognizing what is uh, valuable, uh, to, and, and coming up with strategies to modernize them, uh, recognizing that there's a lot of value sitting there, and as opposed to proposing to construct something new, it's usually a better alternative. So we really focus on that. When we uh, interviewed for this, uh, this project, which we're very happy to be working on, we uh, used a, a project that's actually just uh, almost finishing construction in Smithfield, Rhode Island, that we uh, um, completed. We, we actually didn't become involved until stage three and stage four in that process. However, it was similar in the fact that Smithfield had some aging schools that needed uh, educational improvements, but also needed substantial capital needs attention. And uh, we worked with Colliers on that, uh, also uh, importantly, uh, to craft a strategy to uh, address both of those uh, uh, needs, uh, and did so uh, bringing that budget in under under budget, uh, and there's some additional challenges that I could go into, but I won't. I won't go into that now. A little later in the presentation, I'm going to uh, describe uh, more in depth what we've been doing uh, in this early stage one uh, phase of the project, as well as uh, the stage two um, uh, portion of our scope of work. Uh, one last thing I'll mention is that. Uh, in addition to, and Ed Safun is going to introduce himself in a moment, in addition to the folks within our firm that are working on this project, we uh, have a team of, of consultants including mechanical, electrical, plumbing, structural, landscape architecture, cost consultant, maybe I'm forgetting someone, civil engineer, uh, that are working with us on these two phase one and phase two stages of work. Hi, my name is Edward Safune. I'm an associate principal with DBBW Architects. And um, as uh, Rosemary informed you earlier, we have hit the ground hard with this and looked at the buildings very carefully to determine what the baseline needs are and um, to help justify the town's ask, basically, to the state for reimbursement. So we are very keen on trying to maximize what we can get from state aid so that it's not on the taxpayer's shoulders in the town of Middletown. Thank you. Uh, next slide. So uh, before we start presenting some of the future plans, uh, I'm sure you want to do uh, know the update of our, our bond projects and capital improvements. So first of all, I do want to thank you for your support with the bond dollars and capital improvement. Uh, the town council over the years has recognized that safe, healthy, cheerful school facilities <clears throat> are an investment. Uh, investment in terms of the assets for the town, but also for the children of, and families of Middletown. So uh, tonight I hope to share a little bit of how we spent our taxpayers' dollars, what did you get, the bang for the buck, and share where we currently are. Next slide. So this is a review of the projects, and I'll go uh, through each one of these uh, so you have a clear sense of where we are. Uh, we're coming to the end of the life of the bond. Uh, the bond was approximately $10 million, and this is how we spent uh, those dollars. Uh, half a, close to a half a million was spent in what's called building envelope and a Quidnick Elementary School we recon you'll see some pictures after this, too. Uh, Aquidneck Elementary School, we reconfigured the school entrance. You'll see a picture of that. Um, we reconfigured Gaudet entrance. We also replaced windows. 
at Gaudet and uh, phase two windows and doors were uh, replaced at Gaudet. We replaced exterior doors at the high school. That's considered a building envelope. So a half a million, close to a half, half a million was spent there. Uh, the next is flooring. We spent about $300,000, uh, a little over $300,000 in flooring. Again, these buildings are old. You'll see the age of them in, in uh, the next slides. But we needed to re uh, remove and abate asbestos from Forest Avenue School, Godet School, and Middletown High School. <coughs> Next our roofing, and those were um, major, major, major project when we looked at, at our roofs. You know, those are things that you don't necessarily see unless you have a drone and fly over, and we did do that thanks to uh, Mr. Shealy doing a video of that. So the roofs were replaced at a Quidnick school. Uh, we re uh, replaced roofs at Forest Avenue School. We replaced roofs at uh, Gaudet School, at the high school, uh, a number of roofs at, 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 at all of those schools. So that was a, a combination of the bond projects, a million, almost million nine there, and capital expenses. So when uh, you vote on our budget and allocate capital expenses, this is what we've done with the capital expenses. The next area is security, and we used uh, all of uh, the capital, or some of the capital improvement dollars, about 57,000 for security. We needed to uh, secure a Quidnick School and Forest Avenue School and Gaudet School, the entranceway, uh, so that there is a, crea we create uh, an entrance that's secure, a vestibule that's secure, where then the visitor shows why they're in the building and um, they're allowed in. That include, included uh, bulletproof windows and, and slides and so forth. Uh, the next was site work, and this was really out of the bond. Uh, we did uh, repair and replace paving at Forest Avenue School, Gaudet School, and Middletown High School. There was site work all done there. I'm going to go back to the uh, have X system. Uh, we did replace at Forest Avenue the boiler system. We replaced ventilation and repair at um, Gaudet School, uh, a Kudnick School, uh, have at, uh, HVAC, and Middletown High School. Now that project is not complete. I just had an update with our facilities department today. And uh, Holly, uh, our OPM from Colliers, had a, a, a site uh, had a, a site uh, meeting with uh, Alberg, uh, the uh, company that's doing the HVA system. So there are still things that we need to finish up those projects. Uh, but right now we're looking at uh, approximately two million eight, almost two million nine, for that, and that would be at the uh, bond. There could be dollars left over. And we're going to, we'll have to discuss if there are dollars left over from any of the HVAC projects. Uh, those projects, we want to see if there are change orders and so forth before we say that we're under budget there. So th that's basically an update of specifically of those projects. And I'd like to show you some uh, pictures of that work. So the next slide. Uh, this is just our facilities portfolio. It's really good for you uh, to see. You talk about the age of our buildings. So at Quidnick School, it's 67 years old. Uh, Gaudet School, 53 years old. Forest Avenue, 64 years old. And Middletown High School, 61 years old. Where did the time go? for some of those buildings. So the average age of our uh, facilities is 61 years. When you walk through our buildings, you see nice shiny floors. The buildings are clean. But when you, you go underground and in nooks and crannies and in boiler systems, we really need to upgrade these old buildings and systems. 
So uh, <laughs> next slide, please. This is a Quidnick school. Uh, the lower uh, portion, uh, lower picture there shows you the entranceway that was done through the bond. We needed a new handicapped accessible entranceway. <coughs> And again, you know, the, the security, the next slide will show you the security entrance. Next slide. Uh, the upper picture is that um, secure system. So you get buzzed in uh, and then you're in that vestibule, which is secure. That's the bulletproof glass there. And then you're allowed into the building. The lower picture is the HVA system that was done in the uh, east-west wing. That's the oldest part of the building. It's our kindergarten wing. And that, that project is almost complete, not quite complete yet. Next slide is Forest Avenue. And that shows the secure uh, vestibule <coughs> at Forest Avenue. Again, you're buzzed in and then um, the person shows their credentials and why they're here uh, it, to the window, and then they have entry into the building. The lower uh, picture is a picture of the new boilers that were put in. Next slide. Gaudet. Uh, we have a fabulous Gaudet uh, athletic uh, field. Again, thanks to um, the help of a uh, our town council with the track, uh, the lacrosse fields, Salve Regina University partnership, a 40-year uh, partnership uh, that will replace the uh, turf field every 10, 11 years. If you haven't been over there, please get over there. It really looks great. The, the track is unbelievable. I love the colors. Uh, if you were a track athlete and you ran the relays, where the dark, dark area is, that's where you need to do those exchange in, in the 100 yard re, uh, relay, the 400. Um, it, it's just a, a, a fabulous, a fabulous, uh, um, fabulous complex. The tennis courts look pretty yeah, good as well. And the tennis well. court, yeah. I'm getting to that, the tennis and yeah. the basketball courts, it's wow. It's wow when you go there. I have a, a son-in-law who happens to be uh, his part-time job a football coach in uh, Milton, Mass., the head of football, and he loves coming down and taking a look at our facility and, and what they do. Uh, the roofs you see at Gaudet. Next slide. A little bit more of Gaudet. We did that bump out. Um, you know, we were trying to see how we could do that secure uh, entrance way. There was just no way to do that because you, you walked in and you went upstairs, you went downstairs and there was no way. And then we thought about a bump out uh, for the, the uh, entrance way. And we've made that a, a, a great uh, little area that is secure. Again, that has the bulletproof uh, glass and the secure vestibule. Next is our high school. Next slide. You look at the um, secure <coughs> entranceway there, and again, the roofs. Next slide. Yep. And the roofs there. So that's an overview of our bond projects and how we spent those dollars. Uh, again, they were well spent. We monitored the projects closely. When we had the HVA system, uh, kick in this last year. We uh, partnered with Colliers to make sure that uh, that project was going well. And again, the, the role that the OPM does uh, is you know, keeping us uh, within budget and on time. So uh, I'd like to uh, segue into the overview of the ride process, the section three of our agenda tonight. And I'm gonna ask Holly or Derek to come up or both, and maybe you can Great, so thank you and good evening again. Um, so 
this first slide here talks about something that's often on everybody's mind, and, and that really is the dollars and cents of going through the, the ride process. So um, it is very fortuitous uh, in terms of the timing. Because of the general obligation bond, there are bonus points available to you in Middletown. So your baseline housing aid sits at 35%, which is um, the state minimum a, as set by the, the demographics and economic situation of communities across the state. Um, but as part of uh, an equal entitlement program that was made possible through the passing of that general obligation bond, a number of temporary bonuses were put in place uh, to allow you up to an additional uh, approximately 17 and a half percent. I would say the first 10 percent of those bonus points are, are pretty easy to get. Um, there may be an additional five percent that's possible to get. And then that last one that will get you up to the <coughs> to that um, 17 and a half percent is a little bit further of a reach, but something that we're looking at. So really, what these uh, mean in terms of what it looks like in terms of the planning and, and how we receive them. As long as we are in contract with a builder by the end of next year, any project that addresses health and safety will receive a, an additional 5%. So that's, that's fairly easy to do. I would anticipate that any project that you put forth would receive that. Um, in addition, the, the next one in that blue, bluish, column to the left, educational enhancements. Really, this is just about making sure that the, the renovations or capital planning that you may choose to undertake also improve the academic environment. Uh, that would be an additional 5%. And then looking forward to bonuses that don't expire uh, out until 2023, but are a bit trickier to get. Um, if we were to replace one of your facilities, you'd be entitled to 5% um, based on our initial look, that, that probably is not something that we're going to suggest, but certainly those points are available if you were to, to outright replace one of your facilities. Um, similarly, no. if you were to construct new and consolidate under newer and fewer, that would entitle you to buy. Could you just, do you mind uh, just speaking up a little bit? We're having a hard time. I don't know if it's oh, the, yeah, sure. the ventilation system on or what it is. We're just having a hard time hearing you. No problem. So do you mind starting over from the beginning? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I can if you need. Um, but so really, we're, we're going through the money portion. And I'll hit the high parts again and then, and then finish talking about the bonuses. So essentially, by right, you're getting 35%. We'd like to see you get up to an additional 17%. Um, 10, of that, 10 of that is easy. The additional um, points are a little bit harder. I talked through some of the easiest ones. I think I was a little aggressive when I said up to 90%. Well, that, I already wrote that question down. Yeah. yeah. Right. We maximize and stretch every dollar. And the last two are about either decreasing overcrowding or increasing utilization. And likely there are arguments to be made in both um, or one of those cases. And so really, we're looking about being smart with you in terms of the timing of putting this together. So we get the health and safety bonus, we get the educational enhancements bonus, and we get um, either the decrease overcrowding or in utilization that would be our, our stretch goal if you will but um, but really trying to get an additional 15% um, which would put you up at uh, a 50% contribution by the state um, so really exciting and, and a wonderful time to, to be embarking on this program uh, slide Ooh. Okay. Uh, in terms of taking us through this process, and certainly I'll have my colleague Holly jump in for, for any additional details, but as um, the superintendent started to speak about this evening, and we heard a little bit of it from the architect as well, right now we are what is in what is called stage one, which is essentially looking at all of your facilities and determining where the needs are um, so that we can start to identify 
what the next five-year capital plan might want to look like just based on your facilities, where the most uh, priority needs are and, and, and how you may like to proceed. Uh, that gets submitted to the state um, coming up pretty quickly here. That is in September. Uh, we then continue on to start to develop what a solution could look like, and really that's just the prioritization of all of those needs that have been identified and developed, uh, costing of them, and putting together what essentially becomes an appropriation request to the state indicating that of all the needs in the district, here are the things that we really do feel we need to address this round, here's the relative cost, um, and we'd like you, the Department of Education, through the School Building Authority, to contribute our housing aid dollars to the plan. Um, with the approval of that, um, you get to move forward to stage three, uh, depending upon how that is funded. We had talked a little bit about uh, perhaps a, a referenda to provide bond funding for that. So with uh, a submission in February of stage two, you would get approval from the state of Rhode Island likely in May of next year and be able to take any <coughs> referenda to your voters in November, November as part of the election cycle. <coughs> um, with that approval in hand, you're then free to move forward with your design team uh, to fully design each of the projects and get them ready to uh, bid and move into construction. So stage three is really about getting through that design process Stage four is getting the projects built, uh, and then stage five is reconciling all of the finances at the back end and making sure we've maximized to pull as much money as possible back into Middletown. Um, Mr. President. Yeah, I, yes, Mrs. Von Villas. I just, I just would appreciate it if you would go through the timeline again as it applies to the voters, because I, I want to get a real feel for timing. I was going to ask the same thing because just what you said was, unless I heard it wrong, was, you know, a certain time that we can go forward with the bond and then right. you're talking about, we don't even know what the dollars would be right. based upon, you know, architect and design and all that. We would want that first before we go anywhere. Yeah. I don't know what stage that falls in. No. I mean, I was going to ask, I'm glad you did, thank you, but we want to make sure that you know, we can't go, well, we're going to go for a bond, but we just don't know what it is. Sorry, guys. Yeah. We'll let you know when we get closer to the election. Right. No. Right. <laughs> you yeah. know. No, perfect question. So okay. with, um, so just very high level about the timeline and what to expect along the way. So the submission in September is just indicating that there are some things that you might like to do. The submission then in February of 22 is the final list of what you've, you'd like to do with all of the budgets associated with that. So whatever um, you, the town, with the school department decide is appropriate to do in terms of the, the number and types of projects and the <coughs> overall costs associated, we would send that into the state in February of next year, indicating that we intend to do all of these projects over the next five years and we intend to spend no more than this amount of money. The state will review that with us and get back to you and say, yes, we approve this, or yes, we approve it with some tweaks uh, by May of 2022. At that point, after you've submitted in, in February and the lead up to May and then beyond, is when you have the opportunity to, to go out and really speak to the community and say, you know, this is what we've come to. Here's the anticipated cost. Here are some pictures, descriptions, renderings of what it is we intend to do, we'd love your support on this bond referenda. So you have quite a bit of lead in time between when we submit and basically finalize the budgets in February of 22 um, and when okay. you'd be asking uh, your community to, to vote on it in November. <clears throat> Could we get those timelines on a, on a sheet? Yeah. They are. They're in your package. They are. Okay. Okay. But, but at, at what point do the voters have to approve? Sure. So you would be asking the voters to come out in favor of, uh, in, you know, ideally, in November of 2022. Okay. Okay. I, I'm, I'm going to say something here only because only Rosemary will know exactly what I'm talking about. 
going back to the 90s. We lived it, okay? Um, and I'm, the reason I talk about this is because it's a cautionary tale. It has nothing to do with the proposal that you have. It's just a cautionary tale. In the 90s, the school department went out for a huge bond, 17 something million dollars, okay? Um, there was an issue and it, the vote was um, nulled, for lack of a better way to describe it. Um, shortly thereafter, another six months, and I'm, I'm a little loose on the timeline, okay? And I'm a little loose on the numbers, but you will know what I'm talking about, I know, because we lived it. Um, we went back a second time, and we asked only for six point something, um, eight or whatever, I don't remember. It was defeated. And then we went back a third time, and I do think I remember the right number, 4.6, and it was approved. What I am concerned about, and I think you need to be very concerned about, and that's why I asked about the timeline. If you're talking about November of next, next year, as a school person, we tend to believe that the entire <coughs> community supports what we're doing and they will be favorable for it. Realistically, that is not the case. I'm sorry. As a school person, I can say that. Realistically, Rosemary, you know this. It's not the case. So what I am concerned about is that you if, in fact, this does go forward the way you're talking about it, and, and I don't know what the council's going to decide, you're going to decide, I don't know. I'm just talking about my concerns. There would have to be a huge campaign, huge. Little stuff, or, you know, what I'm talking about huge, because we've been there, done that, okay? So please just keep that in mind, those of you on the committee, that if in fact you end up going forward with that, that you do do it right, because you don't want to go forward and lose it. And, and thank you for reminding me of that. I, I, I haven't forgotten, it was a lesson learned. <laughs> yes. And I think the work that we have to do between the stage one submittal, which is just you know, permission to go forward, and the February submittal is to work hand and glove with the town council and the building committee and other citizens to make sure we find that magic, well, first of all, find, prioritize the projects according to health and safety, and we want that other bonus there, the educational uh, uh, enhancements. But then find that number, that ballpark number, that's going to be, you know, I always call it what is going to pass the laugh test. You know, what is that, what is that sweet number <coughs> that is going to be palatable for our, um, our community for a bond? And, and, and I hearken back to those, those days, so thank you. Palatable is, 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 um, is a good word. Um, it's an appropriate word palatable for the majority of the community. That's what you need. Right, right. I, but I, I, I think it's, go on, I'm sorry. I, I've lived your sen sentiment here exactly, and I think this is one of the reasons why Rhode Island Department come up with this procedure that we're presenting to you tonight. So that when you do come to the point where you're going before the voters, you're going before the voters with, this is what we need. And this is, you know, a, a document. You're going to see a schematic where you're going to know what you're going to be getting for the money. And I think the other thing we're going to have to be looking at is what's our options if we don't? I think one of the things we have to look at is how old our schools are and how much work they do need. And it's a reality. It's not a wish or a hope. It's, it's a fact. And if we don't have an opportunity like we have right now to maximize our reimbursement from the state, we're going to be funding this out of our pockets directly. And I think that's the thing that we need to do as we prepare these documents to get to the voters and understand this is what our options are. 
and I understand what you're saying. I remember. I lived through it. It's the, it's the voters. You just actually put your finger on it. It is, it is not just everybody going together. That, that when you finally get what you, what you think is right and you identify a number, that's not the end of it. Nope. That's really almost only halfway there. So, so you must be aware as you go forward that, that even if you get approval, the fact is that you've got to sell it because if you don't sell it, you don't get it. Exactly. Okay. That's it. And, and I think Ed makes a great point. You know, these are aging, aging uh, buildings, and are we going to keep funding them through a capital improvement plan without any real reimbursement or go and sell the idea that a bond is the best way to do this because of the possible reimbursement. Sell it. Uh, okay. Let's, con let's continue on. Yes, ma'am. May I make a clarification on the conversation? Sure. So, Charlie, you said the goal was to provide a letter of intent to, to ride, I assume, and that's, is that what's due in September? September is that stage 15th. one? Yep, that letter, um, and we, I think we've shared an example of that letter yeah. um, this week, and that's gotta be signed by the superintendent of schools, the chairperson of the school committee, and the town representative in this case is the town council. Okay. So we've, we've asked to be on your agenda uh, on September 7th to vote on that. And the, the vote, the referendum would be in November of 2022, and do I understand that to get one of those 5%, we would have to have a builder on contract by December 31st of 2022? I'll, I'll let Collier answer that one. Dave. Yeah, so thank you. And another excellent question. Um, and so yes, what we would need to do short of the legislature issuing an extension, which there is talk about, and I would certainly encourage you to all to talk to your legislators about the importance of allowing more time to access those funds. But should the date hold, what we would advise you to do is immediately after voter approval, we would go out with an RFP for a construction manager at risk. The reason we would do that is because we could bring them on to participate in pre-construction services. So as the designer is completing the final designs and you're getting ready to build, the contractor could already be on board, part of the team contributing to estimating, making sure things are constructible, making sure we understand supply chains. And by having a contract with a builder by the end of the calendar year, that locks in your right to access those bonus points. So admittedly, we'd be speeding up the timeline in which you would normally bring a builder to the table, um, but it is achievable. And when we're talking about between 10 and 17 and a half percentage points, it's something we, you know, we definitely want you to consider. Um, but again, as, as we continue further down this journey, those conversations with your representatives in the State House um, could be very important. And I think you're one of a number of communities who will really benefit from additional time to access those bonuses. I have a quick question on that. Um, if we keep asking questions, fine. Yeah, but we started with one, and we're now we're going to go to three or four. <laughs> we want to finish the presentation, but sure. go ahead. My other question because is, it's going to uh, lead to more questions. Okay. I can save it then. Okay. I can save it. Go ahead, Dennis. No, I'm good. I'll, I'll wait. I'll you sure? No. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to be rude or cut you off. I just want to get through the presentation. So I apologize if I did. I just want to make sure we stay on point. You let one go through. Why don't you let Dennis go through? Because then everyone else will go well, through. That's right. Should have let one go through. <clears throat> okay. If we move on to uh, section four, which is the education, uh, educational planning and facilities review. Uh, next slide. Part of this uh, process is taking a look, as I said, the educational planning vision sessions that Dr. Locker has been conducting. We've had two sessions. We're uh, uh, scheduled to have another one mid-September. Uh, but emerging out of these uh, visioning sessions are, I'm going to give you some uh, broad-based um, uh, themes that are emerging. What has been successful for us is the learning centers created at Forest Avenue School and Gaudet School. 
uh, listening to the members on the visioning uh, committee, they would like to create more learning centers at each of our schools. Uh, those would be common areas where you could do cross-disciplinary um, uh, teaching and learning, um, just a, a number of things that uh, really have added to the depth and breadth of Forest Avenue and Gaudet School where we've had those uh, learning centers. The other piece that is emerging is uh, state of the art or really major upgrades to science labs at the middle school and the high school. As we um, look at the science labs, there have been no updates. There are two science labs at our high school that are up to date. The other piece is bumping out somewhere uh, to expand our Korea tech pathways. We have uh, computer science and a robotic. We have a third one that we're, this is our sec uh, second year of biomedical uh, pathway. And there's some good news in the wings about a potential grant uh, that we should hear in the next week of a half a million dollars to help infuse some dollars into, into that pathway. But really maybe to bump out uh, and connect it with the, um, the uh, greenhouse there or whatever, but to expand that. So that's what's emerging. When you look at our high school library, it's probably the same that when you went to school. You went to school here, Tom, or Paul did, I know. The same. That's 40 years ago. I know. It's unbelievable. I know. It's incredible, but it, the library probably looks the same. It does. You know, I saw I, it the other night. Yeah. And when I go to open house or orientations and I, and I hear the parents walking the halls, they say, there's a sense of nostalgia, and it's great. Oh, this is just like when I left it. So that's kind of a good thing. They have that warm feeling, but it's not so good for 21st century learning. So it kind of, you know, I, I get a little hair on my neck goes up a little bit. Uh, the other piece is the planetarium, um, a small performance area. That's, that's a theme emerging. Uh, you, we had thought a, a, an auditorium might be out there, but we are forging a partnership with Ocean Point, um, the former, uh, this is totally Rhode Island, the, a former um, athletic club. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have a 650 auditorium. We're having our opening day with our teachers there, there, we're splitting the staff, you know, for COVID safety. But that, you know, that's like a salve partnership that we have, that we wouldn't have to spend dollars for that, uh, for that auditorium. So those are some of the emerging themes. And if Dr. Locker was here, he'd be telling you that. And we've been, I've been at all of those uh, um, sessions. But really, too, I'm going to turn this over to Doug, and he's going to talk to you about. Uh, the existing conditions and the evaluations that are done from that. Great. Thank you, Rosemary. Um, well, so again, I thought it would be helpful to review what our team has been doing since we started working on the project since mid-July um, in support, first for stage one, uh, which is identification of need. Um, you know, our main, our main task in, the, in support of that is to effectively uh, evaluate uh, the buildings, all of the facilities. We started by looking at the existing documentation you have, which um, a lot of drawings, sorting through them. You, you know, in order to, to really understand a building, you have to look at the, the way it was constructed originally improvements that have been made over the years, evaluate the Jacobs Report and, and your own capital needs plan uh, to make sure we understand uh, uh, sort of as a starting point uh, what we're dealing with. Um, over the course of uh, several days, we toured each building with our team of consultants that I mentioned earlier. And, um, and Based on that, we developed a, uh, a narrative describing the conditions as well as this uh, comprehensive list of, of deficiencies, which I think you all have a copy of. Um, 
It's, it's important to make a few points here. Uh, one is that, that this work, it really is, follows, um, you know, the good work that the town has done previously in addressing capital needs as they become apparent, you know, as evidenced by the scope of work that Rosemary just reviewed in the 2016 bond, that sort of work. Our objective is a more comprehensive look at these, at these schools. Um, and, and really an important point to make is, is so much of that comprehensive look is based on the age of the schools. We talked about that earlier. Um, uh, and the fact that so much of the infrastructure um, uh, is, for, for example, piping, underground work, so forth, has never been replaced. And everything has a useful life. And so in, in thinking about a, a, a sensible strategy to move forward to address those capital needs, it, it makes sense to understand uh, the, the useful life of all of these components. Another major consideration that we have is at the time that each of these buildings was built, the building and fire codes were very different than they are today. And so in thinking about a large scale project, we, we need to consider current codes and how uh, these schools need to be, should be updated to address those codes. And I'm, I'm talking also about accessibility, uh, which is a, a big factor. Um, very different strategy about accessibility today than, than was apparent in uh, the time when those schools um, uh, were constructed. Um, so Bless you. this list that we've developed, another very important point to make is that we recognize that, that potentially this project won't address all of these deficiencies. It's, it's likely that it won't. And, and in this initial work in stage one, the goal is not to tell what we're going to do, it's just to identify the needs. And then in stage two, you figure out, you prioritize this work, and it's closely going to be associated with what decisions are made on educational improvements as well. Because you can sort of think about if you decide to, to make a certain educational improvement that requires you to pull up a floor in a room or something that you might then address underground piping that might be older. But you might choose to defer that work if you're not doing that. So the, the two things go hand in hand. And our goal is to provide you with guidance to develop a sensible approach for doing all of that work, both addressing educational needs and capital needs in a sensible way, and to understand that what isn't eventually included in this, in this project should be planned for subsequent years. And um, uh, we, we also want to help you realize the efficiency of, of um, perhaps taking advantage of maximizing reimbursements and so forth. So, um, and to keep an open mind about what the appropriate amount of work is rather than try to sort of figure out the budget first and then back into it. And we're fully aware of budget restraints, but I, I think that ultimately it's a matter of when the work has to get paid for and what the most cost effective way to address that is knowing that at some point it has to get addressed. Um, so um, I mentioned this uh, earlier, also in phase one, uh, uh, we're participating. We, we, we came on board at, uh, early enough to join the second of the visioning sessions uh, that Frank, Dr. Locker is conducting. It's important for us to hear that conversation as well, because in stage two, our charge, is to, is to help you combine uh, the, the planning of educational improvements with the planning of capital needs improvements. 
Um, and, and so we want to make sure we're, we're understanding the conversations and the concerns that are addressed through those visioning sessions as part of our job. Um, I, I think another really important point to make here is that, um, and I'm going to jump ahead to stage two now, uh, the work in, in figuring out what the sensible approach for the town to take to address both of those things uh, should be done as collaboratively as possible. And, and I think, you, um, Councilwoman, you made a great point about, about the, the, the potential of, of, of succeeding with this bond uh, is going to be entirely based on everyone trusting that you're doing the sensible thing, and regardless of how it turns out. And I think keeping uh, the convert, there's also a limited amount of time. We have, we have effectively uh, from September until January to compile this stage two. During that period of time, there will be a lot of options and a lot of combinations of educational improvements and capital needs that could be considered. But we really need to, to involve everyone in the conversation to look at those possibilities along the way and not ever have to take a step backwards in that, in that process. Uh, that, that's a hard thing to do, but I think the most best possible way to achieve that is to, is to involve people in a collaborative process in reviewing those options at each step of the way. And uh, we look forward to, to you know, kind of doing our part and helping you do that. Um, finally, uh, also in stage two, um, Uh, as important, really, is to in communicate very clearly with RIDE through that process. You, you, want, you want them to be on board with your plan. You want them to be looking at your strategy and nodding yes, so that when you ask for approval of that plan, eventually upon submission of stage two, you, um, you can be assured that they're going to going to approve it. Um, I, I talked a little earlier about the project that we're currently working on in Smithfield with, with Colliers, and I mentioned that we didn't even get involved in that project in stage, until stage three. We inherited a stage two submission, that is a proposed project in conceptual form with a budget, a cost estimate that the town had voted on. So you have a scope of work and you have a cost estimate. And when we inherited that, unfortunately those things didn't correlate. And so we had a challenge of having to reconcile and shape the scope of the eventual project so that the cost and the and the objective of, of, the, of the work were, were, were coordinated. And I'm, I'm mentioning that. Question. Can we, can we, do, can we, can it wait till the end? Well, I, it's I not fair if I cut one person off and then. Sure. Oh, I just, thank you. I, I'm only mentioning that for one reason, and that is that, that um, I'm stressing the importance of, of making sure that, that that the scope and the cost estimate are aligned, confidently aligned for your stage two submission and that you've identified a scope of work that, um, that you are confident will have the support of the voters. And I, I think that uh, to assisting in that community outreach and referendum support is also an important role of the team. And, you know, they, they uh, touring schools is a hugely important thing. I think that anyone going to the schools can understand some of the points we're making about, about the simple fact that the age of these schools affect so much what, 
needs to be done. Uh, and secondly, uh, I'm, I'm going to stress the importance of, of really good um, uh, three-dimensional graphic rep representation about what you intend to, to do. You know, uh, you can modernizing a school doesn't. That's not oftentimes the expensive part. The educational improvements that everyone will get excited about sometimes is is a, is a smaller portion of the cost of the project than addressing the less you know exciting capital needs issues. But it's important for people to get excited about what they finally may see, and so. Um, uh, uh, not just the physical changes that might be by incorporating common learning spaces, library upgrades, science lab upgrades, that sort of thing, but just finishes and furnishings. That, that goes a huge way um, uh, to getting, getting the community excited about, about uh, investing in, in the schools. Um, so I've kind of gone on <laughs> a little bit, I'm sure. You have a few questions. You are. <clears throat> Sorry. That's OK. I'm, I'm good. Thank you. OK. Is that it? Nate's giving me the signal back there to you for you to use the mic. Sure. Thank you. Um, you know, <laughs> Thank I, you, I do want to stress that uh, stage one is the beginning process, and uh, we have a great group of volunteers <coughs> and talented, skilled volunteers who are part of the building committee, plus the, you know, our educational planner, our architect, and OPM as we go forward. Okay. Council of Toronto. Thank you. I was just going back, you had mentioned the state representatives and working with the state. How involved have they been with this group locally during your process of pulling this together? I know you've been working on this for weeks and weeks and weeks, and has our state representatives been involved in those meetings? Uh, no. No. We would, we would go to them to ask to ex do the extension, but typically our state representatives do not get involved in a visioning or uh, okay because it sounded like we were already pretty confident we're gonna need to file for an extension is kind of what I heard through that back and forth a little bit that you know we'll have to I, rush I think and hire. Derek our OPM suggested that we do that I think right. we have a good relationship with our um, our local reps that they would support something like this I believe uh, from what I've heard there's 10 or 12 other communities position to go forward with the stage one uh, in a few weeks and at, at all of those communities would like an extension so right and it sounds collectively like it, that that's a good voice right and then it sounded like hey we're then you know get to another point in this where we're going to have to hire a contractor quick get you know so that it we have something in place so we can qualify for some more points so as you were saying if we get ahead of the curve and I'm just thinking if we've got our state representatives aware that this is going to need to happen, the state's making this up as we go along, the rules. Fair to say in regards to the funding and what you get for what you do. So I don't know that they're making it up. I don't, Derek, Derek do you? No, I mean, it's in place. They could change it. I mean, they could say, hey, you can have an extension or things requalify because we've been seeing funding coming down from the state in a lot of different ways. And I'll, I'll say it, unification, there was a big to do on monies there too, okay? So this is another program I'm seeing that I'm, I appreciate more from what I'm hearing. Uh, so I'm just saying, you know, I appreciate that, but just getting our state representatives involved, it'd be great to know that they're in, you know, step with us. And so if we do need to bring it back to the state and get something approved, they're all up to speed on it. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, I, I think those are great points. And the only thing I would add as, as sort of additional information and perhaps clarification is as the plan is finalized in terms of what Middletown would like to do, and we look at the size of the ask, 
We'll obviously be also working with the town administration, likely the financial advisor and council. At that point, you know, once we've established things in February, we're going to need to um, put forth enabling legislation anyhow. And that starts to be um, perhaps even better timing to, to speak to your legislators and say, okay, so here's the enabling legislation to put the bond referenda together. <coughs> oh, and by the way, we could do so much better in Middletown, as well as many of our peers across the state, if we talk to the general treasurer's office, who, who really uh, was a, a key player in, in putting all of this together and saying, it may be prudent to give us a little bit of extra time so that we bring on the contractor when it's right for the project as opposed to when it's right to make sure that we're not missing a funding opportunity. So I, I think there's a, it's absolutely important to bring them along, um, but we may have some time because I'd like to be able to, to have you be able to explain to them what the ask is and what the enabling legislation wants to look like. If, if that makes sense. It does, thank you. I just got one more, and then I'll kick it back. The, um, I liked what I heard in regards to, you've got your capital improvements, but you've got your educational improvements, and how you know, those two have to go hand in hand with each other. I think that's so important. And then that's prioritizing the projects of which ones are we're gonna do first, and which one should be done first, right? And this is a five-year program. You know, we did a $10 million bond, and we still haven't finished all the projects in four years. So I'm sure there'll be something that talks about, you know, reality of how many projects we can actually really get done in five years. So we're not asking for some big ass that we're not going to get it done in five years, which if they give us 10 years, maybe that would be a little different story. But what I'd like to know after this, too, from this committee, what is the school system going to look like at the end of this? And what do we anticipate the next five years or 10 years after that? What's that gonna look like? So that would just be like something I'd like to see. Yeah, I, I love it, that's great. And admittedly, I probably can't answer that tonight, but what I can say, and I your architect alluded to it, is they've come up with this great list. Admittedly, it's probably not all feasible to fund or complete within five years. But if you take it as a list and you prioritize and you say in the next five years, it is achievable to do this, and we think we can finance <clears throat> that. And then the next set of priorities right behind it become the 10-year plan and the 15. I, I think the, the idea is to put together a roadmap, and it looks like Doug wants to jump in, about what exactly that will look like. So I, th I think it's coming. Thank you. I'll just add to that. Um, as part of the stage two submission, uh, you're, re you're required to really think about that, a at least to think about the work that you're proposing that project and how it's phased. And of course that is determined by, you know, f physically what work can get done when. You're always trying to package it in the most efficient way you can. Um, uh, and so much of that work would get done over summers. Um, uh, and, and you can work on, 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 you know, multiple schools within the same summer. But, but ultimately, that phasing plan is an important part of, of the submission, and, uh, and it starts to answer the question you're, you know, you're asking. Great, thank you. So, thanks, uh, yeah. thank you, Dennis. So, Derek, as I'm sitting here listening to this, and if, and Rosemary, and you're accurate, if you're accurate with your statement and saying there's 10 or 12 other, um, municipalities in the state looking for the same extension, wouldn't the light bulb go off and ride and go, oh, maybe we're going about this the wrong way? I mean, I, I just, something's not, something doesn't make sense to me there. Sure, and, and as soon as we, I, I can get those, um, those I mean, has anybody talked to them and said, hey, this doesn't make sense, but before we go, have to go and get our legislators involved? I, I don't think it's going to be a heavy ask or a for the legislature, legislators to extend the timeline. No, no, I don't think you, so either, you have but. Seth Magazino, who, you know, we know all the political piece and, and so forth, and he's gonna run on, on getting that, the construction <laughs> and all. He, the, very visible, he's very passionate about that. I don't wanna get into the politics uh, of it, but it, it is a factor. And I think the 10, 10 or 12 communities, whoever 
finally submits on September 15th, uh, we can work with those communities and their legislators. Uh, and you know okay. uh, Senator De Palma and Rep yeah. uh, Ruggiero are No, no, I, I get all that, but I'm just saying, it just, why wouldn't somebody just call Ride and go, hey, doesn't and make sense, guys. Process, I guess. Okay. Yeah. And I just want to say that we are mm -hmm. going to come in line with our bond projects. The only thing hanging out there are the uh, HVA SIT. No, that's great. I didn't mean that. Yeah. I'm just saying yeah. that some of the, I look at this, and I'm like, oh, man, is this like 10, you know, there's a lot of work here, you know, and yeah. there's a lot going no, on. But so. we're, you know, <coughs> we're very close to those. Yeah, Dennis, right. I was in the high school um, Monday night for my son's freshman orientation, mm. and there was a lot of HVAC work. That's great. I mean, stuff all over the place. Yeah. I just hope they can get it done before school opens. Well, we're waiting for, you know, <laughs> just like everything else, uh, we're waiting for deliveries for filters and so forth. Yeah. I know Pahali could okay. probably talk, but... Mrs. Von Villas. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I'm going to pick up on something that you said, okay? Um, one of... <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry. One of my strong mottos is planning. Planning is everything. Planning. Not conceptualizing, but planning. And what you said was, with the previous project, that you came in conceptualization was already done, and you were, you were then stuck with going forward, OK? I'm looking at the necessity of school construction, all right? Um, and I'm looking at stage one, stage two, stage three. And if I understand what you said, it sounds like stage two was fine, but you came in at stage three, okay. I will tell you, as I don't know how to say this any stronger, planning is everything, conceptualizing is nothing. You will not sell a concept, you will sell a plan. So I wouldn't care how hard you had to work between now and, what is it, um, February, what you need the, the stage two. I don't care how hard you have to work between now and then. It is extremely important that you are able to, to develop concrete plans so that you can say, this is what we're going to do. Because you won't sell anything other than that to the public. You won't. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I think that's exactly what our objective is. It's, I, I was simply making the point that in the, in the other example I gave you, um, uh, that plan was another, another team's plan. Mm. Yeah. And we inherited that. And so that's a more difficult process uh, than ideally you would be working with the same team through the whole project. Yes, and you had two, two different ideas going at the same time. You can't have that. You can't. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm concerned. Politics is really about the public, OK? It's about 15,000 people or 7,000 voters or however many you've got, OK? But the fact is that it's not going to fly if you only look at selling it to the people who understand it. Right. You've got to sell it to the voters. And the only way you're going to sell it to the voters is with concrete detail, a concrete plan. I, I don't know what she has in that vitamin water over there, but I'm going to have some of that. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, and, and this is where the, um, uh, the visioning committee has come in, and that's where this process started after the building committee was developed. This visioning group is made up of numerous different uh, perspectives from the community. They're, they're not all people that have children in the school system, which was really nice when different people came to the meetings because there are some educators in there, there are community members, there are um, architects, engineers. So it, it's a wide variety, which has been fantastic. So by getting all of those perspectives and the exercises that we did with Frank were really insightful and um, very enlightening because it gave that, by putting us in groups, and we all split up in different groups, it was fantastic putting that all together on a piece of paper and, and doing all this whole workshops that we've been doing so far is exactly what you're saying, Barbara. It's creating that plan to be very concrete. 
So what you have here with this list is just showing the huge thing, all the list of things that are our needs. But then those have to be narrowed down between now and February of, okay, these are the priorities, these are, and that's where that plan will formulate and come into, to come to, come to fruition to be able to submit for stage two. This is what we're going to do. Because I will tell you, right. sitting up here, I'm only one member of the council. But if you come in with concepts, forget it, don't bother, I'm not gonna vote for it. Right. If and you come in with a distinct plan that tells me what you're going to do going forward, I will support you. But at this point, what happens is we, get, we have to just get to stage two. So once stage one is approved, then that time and effort to do that now is, is not- I'm Not suggesting right. now. I'm no, just no. suggesting Before, you need to have correct. it by a certain time. Correct. And that is where this, this process goes. So once this is submitted, we get the approval back <coughs> and we jump into that to become, to have more concrete plans. So that, yes, that is all, we've been working on this now for months. So that is definitely the, the plan to make a plan. <laughs> just, just two quick points to add to that. I think, um, you know, anytime you're, you're presenting an idea to community, uh, there are things about that idea that, some things that'll appeal uh, some people will respond to the, you know, being excited about the educational improvements. Other people might just be excited about the fact that that you're 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 being very thorough in in presenting a, 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 a fiscally um, sensible approach to a need. And 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 I think that anytime you talk about we we have to do this, it's also important to talk about well, if we don't do this, then what? Right, because because it's you know if if that everyone accepts the fact that something has to be done given the age of the schools, then there has to be a plan to to address that, mm -hmm. and 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 so if it's not this one, then then what is it, and what is the cost of that relative to this <coughs> plan, and I think that that's that's something that can be. But that's not persuasive to the public. What's persuasive to the public is this is what we want to do. This is very clear. This is what we are going to do. I mean, you know, you can only do it up to a certain amount, like 90% and, you know, whatever. I'm not saying that you need 100% of your plan. All I'm saying to you is if you want to sell this to the public, you have to tell them what you're going to do, yeah. that they can guarantee what they're going to do, and when they walk away from the voting booth, they'll know you're going to do that at least. Yeah, and that and that is exactly what what is... Um, uh, the intent of stage two. That, that's exactly what we're... What and I just to wanted do. to comment on that too. Um, you know, we, we've had two visioning sessions so far. I, I can, you know, some of the homeowners are here, parents are, or taxpayers are here that attended those as well. We'd like more people. We'd like to get more people at those visioning sessions. You know, I'll, I'm going to invite the state representatives to it. It's on September 15th. Um, I know you guys probably don't want another meeting to attend, but come, come to it as well. It, it's we just ask that people register through Rosemary's office. Um, but it's, it's been very, you know, with our building committee, we want to get reach out to the community now and not wait until it's time to vote. We want their input now. And, and any means we can get that, we're willing to do that. So, you know, we've had, I'd say on average, between 30 to 40 people at those vision sessions. I think we need more people, in my opinion. There are 7,000 voters. Correct. And, and we're doing everything we can. We've, we've reached out through the town to try to get more people. Um, but you know, I coach youth soccer, it's tough to get parents to help out there sometimes too. <laughs> no, so. no, but you're, you're dealing with people who support schools. I'm talking about the people that don't have kids in the schools or that are, that are older, older you know, residents, talking about people that are concerned about their pocketbook and they don't really care. I mean, they cared when their kids were there, but they don't have that same passion that you guys have, okay? So that's what you've got to, You've got to raise their level of passion because if you don't have 50%, 51% of that 7,000 or whatever, how many people go to the, poll, to the polls, you're dead in the water. And I'm just, that's my worry. That's okay. about too. I, I have that same worry and it's, anybody here will tell you, I've been saying we need to reach out, reach out, reach out. So we're, we're gonna continue to do that. Mrs. Flynn. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. As a segue from Councilor Von Villis's comment, I was to understand that the letter of intent, um, 
essentially looks at the deficiency and decides or presents what you intend to do. Is, is that not true? That is not true. So, no. Terry, can you repeat that? Yeah. Uh, so I, I thought I had heard in conversation that the letter of intent that's due September 15th was the letter where you look at the defici deficiencies and you decide which ones that you want to focus on. <clears throat> that was not correct for the letter of intent. The, the, the list of deficiencies is, accompanies the stage one submission, but it, it, in no way are you saying here are the aspects of that list that are going to be addressed in this project. You, that that, so that comes in stage two. Okay, <coughs> so my. So, yeah. so it will be this, this list. This whole list. And the uh, educational plan, uh, Dr. Locker's report on the vision that will, will be submitted. This, this demonstrates to Rye that we have need. Work. We have uh, reason. We have enthusiasm to fix uh, our buildings and to enhance our educational um, our edu educational uh, process. So, so I also heard the term baseline needs in the conversation. So is this list a complete list of all the needs or what you're terming as baseline needs? And what is the distinction between those? I'm not sure where you've heard baseline needs. Um, uh, Somewhere in the conversation about yeah. the, the list. Uh, yeah. It was, I think, when you were talking about the comparison to the Jacobs report. And uh, so then this, and the term came up. I just didn't know what this list was. Is this everything that you could possibly identify that is needed for our facilities? Or is this something less than? I, I, no, I would say that is a comprehensive list. Everything. Fine. Far um, more uh, detailed than the Jacobs <coughs> report. I'm going to throw an obvious caveat. This is not a cup. You know, this is this was done over a roughly four-day inspection. Obviously, we can't look under every ceiling tile and so yeah. forth. So, Correct. So it's 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 as comprehensive as that is. What <coughs> the point I'm trying to make about uh, sort of expanding on previous assessments is that it, it, it does address things like accessibility and so forth that weren't necessarily identified in those other, other Okay, very good, thank I, you. I would just, while we're on this subject, um, I understand, you know, what your scope, what your job was to do, go identify the needs comprehensively, as you just said. <clears throat> This could become a very dangerous document if it ever gets out um, as part of what potentially would be in the bond. And I know that's not, I, I know that's not, we know that's not the intention. But when you look at this and you go, you know, um, um, trim trees and replace the elbow at the downspout and paint the curb in and, and this and that. I mean, that's, this is, that, that's dangerous when you're talking about a bond and what actual needs are. And I know that's not the intent because this thing would get flushed in a second if, if this was presented. When we're talking about a bond, we're talking about major capital needs that we can't do a budget for on, a, on an annual basis. That's what we're talking about. So I understand what you, what you were charged with and I, I appreciate that. I just want to make sure that everyone's clear on that. That's not that's not part of the bond. These are the needs that are identified by the firm that was hired to identify <clears throat> what the schools needed. That's, this wouldn't be part of that. But if, if we put this online, I'm just going to let you know what's going to happen. No, I, I think everyone understands that. Clearly. Well, we understand that. Well, Publics don't, the public doesn't understand yeah, that. I, I, I think that would need to be that would need to be clarified. I don't know what the what the process is going to be okay. for posting this information. Okay. But uh, we we tried to explain that that's exactly what the intent was, and to, you know, I, I said this earlier, it's to help the town also think about if not part of the bond, how. The well, a lot of these things in here should be addressed addressed through our facilities uh, yeah, guys I, over there, absolutely. and I would separate that out immediately. Absolutely. 
you know, and, and, so. And that, that could be done as, yep. as the very first yep. step in this process. Just having been sitting here for as long as I sit here and seen as many bonds potentially go out and the ones that fail, Middletown voters don't go for, for big, big giant bonds. Yep. They go for what is needed, nice versus necessary. Yep. You know, but again, and if the council's not unified with you guys and the school, forget it. Yep. Okay. Yep. 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 And what we wanted to do, sh show you this and um, the Doug's firm, uh, we wanted to show you all, all of the areas. Some of these can be done by facilities. They could be done by facilities tomorrow. Some can't. And when we would present this, they would be categor categorized, mechanical, uh, I don't know, what are the other areas? Well, well <coughs> most importantly, the, the stage Safety. two, when, yep. when, when, the, when, the, when the stage two scope is finally determined, this list will be itemized to correlate exactly with, with that proposed scope of work, and only that scope of work. We, we so understand that. Everything else mm -hmm. will be, you know, ho hopefully planned for, but not included. Understood. Mr. Councilor uh, Logan. So I, I think that's a good thing. I, I'm glad you clarified that point because I think the important element here is going to come out of the visioning sessions, right? And then determining what needs to happen to meet those elements of the visioning for stage two. So this may be a dumb question, but I'm going to ask it anyways. In the stage two application process, when we get there, can we submit multiple proposals? Because I know the appetite, I like to look at things from options, right? So what's good, what's better, what's best? And I think if we're going to sell something to the public about how we're going to move forward, they're going to want to see those options up front. And I don't know what that process looks like, how we submit that to ride. Can we give them, you know, this is the baseline. Based upon the visioning of where we want to go with our school system, this is the baseline. But if we want to take it to that next level, here's that next phase. And this is what that costs. Now phase three, this is the best option, right? This comes with the extra turbo wax and the undercarriage clean. You're getting sold a bill of goods in that case, but at the end of the day, but this is how we get to that top level. Do we have an opportunity in that application to put forward three models, or does it have to be just one? So I'm, I'm going to jump in here a little bit, and then I'm going to have others expand on that, because I think there's an important point that may make that at least in part possible. So when we submit the stage <coughs> two application, we, we need to give an anticipated maximum spend so that the state can budget for that. And ultimately, we need to figure out how much money is going to referenda, because our overall number, whatever it could be, could be part bond funded, part capital funded, depending upon the capital available to support that. But at the end of the day, there's this little subtext in all of this that says, in these five years, we expect you to spend at minimum 50% of what you had asked for. So by that logic, if you were to put in the premium model, knowing that you have at your option to back down, if that becomes the will of the community, that potentially is possible. Um, but we can't go the other way. You would, you would have to, once the funds are appropriated, aside from repeating the entire process, you can't level up, but you okay. can level yeah. down. No, that's fine. I, listen, let's go for as much as you can. If we're gonna do it, why ask for the bare minimum? Every time I budget anything, I ask for as much as I could possibly get and I get smacked back down to reality, mm -hmm. right? So let's ask for everything we can get from the state. And but the smack down would be a no for the <laughs> referendum right. for us. That's and right. then, then where are we? So, I hear you. Uh, you know, I, I agree with you. I would like to ask for everything too, but I, we need to be reasonable. We need to, we need to prioritize these items and the educational uh, piece and then come up with, collectively, come up with a number that we think is doable for our taxpayers that we can demonstrate here are the plans this is what we want to do this is the deliverable and the, these are the dates we're going to yes. uh, deliver. concrete concrete and that's what we did with a 10 million dollar bond and we you know when we went through that stage process we had to submit a whole bunch of things and a big list and then we got that one back and then we had to narrow it down then we came and met with the town council 
and we came up with a number. What is going to be reasonable to go to the voters? And that is where we came up with, because we hemmed and hawed. I mean, we sat here, some of you were, were here for that. We sat here going back and forth of, do we do 10, do we 12, do we do 15? And that, that discussion well, was back and forth. So together, we will then do that. And then once we have a number that we're aiming for, we already have a priority list. We get asked, you know, a ballpark of where these dollars, of what's going to cost what. And that's what we came back with and discussed around this, right here in this room, to come up with that $10 million. And then we went to the, the voters. We were all on the same page, and that bond passed. So it's that same process again that we're going through. It's just you have to submit to, to ride first, and then we get to narrow it down, and then we have the dialogue of, okay, where do you think our community is at okay. right now okay. to vote for X amount of dollars? So, so, so what you're saying, Teresa, is based on the need la the last time before with the $10 million, $10 million bond went out, I'm not sure if it was Jacobs. I think there were two different reports. Um, one was Jacobs, and I can't remember the other one. The need was really about $19 million. Yes. And, and we settled on 10 because, because 10 is what we could swing yes. without any increase to the taxpayers. Yeah, that's and right. that's how that bond got sold was, here's the need. It's not going to cost you a dime. Why wouldn't right. you vote for it? Right. So but same thing with this reimbursement. So that's why we need to make sure it's safety and health first mm -hmm. and then educational right. and see where those dollars lie and see what we can afford. I'm going to ask Mr. Brown what type of uh, maybe retiring debt we can have, maybe coming up to help offset some of this once we get some numbers. Right. You know, we, and, need, we need to start asking, and, start looking at some of those questions, but we can't do that until we have a number. Right. And once we came back with that $10 million discussion, we also knew what certain priorities were, like the boiler at Forest Avenue and the roofs and, you know, those things were already on the top of the priority list and the safety, of course, with um, new entryways. So those were definitely the top priorities. And then that's when the, the, the school and the town sat down together and said, okay, this is the money that we have available so that there will be no increase um, in taxpayers' uh, in tax, okay. uh, tax dollars. So yes, I mean, it was a, a very long process, but it was very thorough and it was very thoughtful. And that's the same exact thing we'll do again. Um, but the submission of this is September 14th. Mm -hmm. Right, 14th. I, I don't, I gotta, I gotta be honest with you, I don't like the rush feeling. It's just. And, and I get it's a timing thing, I get it. I just, like I said earlier, I, we, we don't want to rush this. We but here's the thing, let me ask this question, and I don't so, know this answer. Okay. What happens if we submit this, and, and I'm asking this for you, because I'm thinking about this. I know we, this is on the ninth hour versus the eleventh hour, but we're close. Um, <laughs> When, if, if this gets submitted and gets denied, then we're, we have nothing, correct? If this gets submitted and we, and we get the approval, it doesn't commit. Nobody. So that, no, I that's, understand that. That's what I was, okay, that was the question I'm asking. So that I understand that what you're saying about yep. the, the window of time and, yep. and that this has to be voted on sooner than later. But remember, there's no commitment. It's just an intent letter of what what needs the district has. understood so i just want to verify clarify that paul because i don't want people yeah, to feel like no I, I was going to recap that later and that was no, one of my there's no commitment yeah. to dollars at all at this point understood mm -hmm. understood dennis okay thank you um really great points um you guys are checking off my list as you're asking these questions but i do want to we're going to go back to your presentation i think you've put a great team together i'm really like what I've heard about the outsourcing and bringing people in that are experts at what they do, and that that's going to give us a much more of a, a view of the correct view of what is needed and what we have a better chance of having a, an on time and on budget project, whatever that happens to be. Okay, so congratulations on that. That's really, really good. Um, you know, that Jacobs report was a report that came out and everyone banked on that report on a lot of decisions they made. And then, you know, as we went down the road, we found out, well, that report really wasn't as good as it was supposed to be, right? So it's like, okay. It, its purpose. it did serve its purpose. Um, 
And you guys did, you know, that $10 million bond was really awesome, and I think you guys did a great job with that. I think that it got applied to the things that needed to be applied to, roofs and air conditioning units and entrances and windows. And so I'm hoping that we got a good shot at that within the schools themselves. And then this round of money, because I do support continually investing in the schools, and because those buildings aren't getting any younger, technology isn't moving any slower, and so I do feel that this is really a good effort on the state level to get involved to help us put together a five-year plan and then being able to assist it. Uh, so um, I think that's really, really good. I am definitely going to be leaning towards projects that are going to go mostly towards education because I think that that's what is needed. There's more needing for the 21st century type of education versus painting a, de you know, painting a side of a building. Right, so I like that. And we have other projects that we're looking at, developments we're looking to do in the town. So we should keep that in mind in regards to, there's a couple here that are new construction that's coming up. And maybe there's some new construction we're looking to do as a, com as a community to offer to the schools and to assist in new programs. So that's just on my agenda. So I'm excited, this, I'm excited for this. I'm gonna sign off on phase one and uh, I look forward to phase two. Okay. This is us. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. So, thank you. <laughs> My questions are going to be directed to you, Mrs. Crager. Let's start <laughs> off with a question as far as enrollment go goes. You've listed enrollment for the four schools. What year is that based on? Is that going to be our current year, our past year, or? Uh, the, that data is uh, this pa past year. It's not past the current year. year. So is there a possibility that our enrollment is going to increase? Uh, our, actually, when I looked at enrollment data today, um, making sure our class sizes were intact, our enrollment is up. Is up. So we All never right. know until our students arrive on, on uh, Wednesday, but our uh, people are enrolled. Thank you. And it's up quite a bit. All right. My other part, a comment. As our president stated, first of all, you need a magnifying glass to read this. <laughs> Second, if you want our regular taxpayers, if they get a hold of this and they see what is on this list, they're not going to vote for it. I certainly wouldn't vote for it. Trim the trees. You need that? You need a bond to do that? Two. Replaced light fixtures. You need a bond to do that? You've got a maintenance department. Um, damaged bricks. You need, a you need a bond to do that? Um, damaged wo uh, wood columns in the gym and cafeteria. I can't believe I'm going to go home and go through this with a magnifying glass, and then I'm going to pass it around to my seniors and see what they think. No, you said you didn't want to share it. I'm a senior. <laughs> no, I, we wanted to be transparent. I'm the oldest one on this board, and I've got seniors who are going to look at this, and they're going to pass it along to their friends. This is, this is just for the list. Oh, 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 it's not oh. for the board. It's not for the board. Okay. It's the list. It should never have been put on here, Teresa. It's, this is a okay. Trim the trees. Come on. So the... <laughs> I understand the need, and that's why I tried to clear it up earlier. I'm that actually I looking just, at our seniors who can't afford, who cannot even afford to live in their homes. Some of them. Uh, and another comment I'm going to make: mm. our voting region has changed. Majority of voters don't live in town; they only come for the summer. They're not full-time residents. How are you going to get them to approve this bond? This is not a bond. This is a facility. The bond. It's okay. For a all right. All right. All right. So, just for clarity purposes, this is just what we said it was. Um, the the gentleman here from DV. DVDW. D yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, they were charged with coming up to find out what the needs were, all over. That doesn't necessarily. That doesn't mean that. That's what they were charged with. This. What this list is. That not these not all these things probably the majority of them aren't going to be for the bond. They were charged with just coming up with what the assessment what needs assessment was for the district, much like the Jacobs report. We are required but, to do this. Uh, understood, uh, understood. So let's all just take a breath and yep. 
and uh, and um, I understand the concern. We all have the same concern. Absolutely. Based upon if we're going to move forward, so we just need we're clear with that. Okay. But we need the te we need to be. I want you all comfortable that this is a list of everything that we need. You know, I could know you when please could you please take this and separate what your t facilities team could do and clean this list up and come back <laughs> and that would be fantastic. We should. We should. You know, and yeah. just the edu to build on what uh, Councilman Toronto uh, talked about the educational enhancements. We know that our our uh, facilities department did those learning centers they they that was their blood sweat and tears so the in kind stuff uh we see those educational uh enhancements really largely being do uh, done in house if possible mm -hmm. um but again this is required by the state to identify everything and i, I know when council member logan came on he talked about planning, and we were talking about the field and so forth. So showing you this, we wanted to show you all this. So you, you know clearly what, where the dollars are going, why we ask for the capital improvement that we need to, and you, larger things will p be pulled out for a bond when you look at mechanical engineering or, uh, or plumbing, whatever those Once we get the stage. Uh, yeah. Okay. Two? two? Yes, and okay. I, I'll just repeat right. the point I made earlier, which is simply that, you know, we recognize clearly that a lot of this stuff, maybe most of this stuff, won't be on the bond. However, we want to also help you anticipate how that work is planned for and paid for in, in future years beyond this bond. Okay. And so that's... I just want to be clear about that. There's no intention that this is what is going to be included on the bond. And Rod requires everything. Understood. So it's not like this is something that we're doing just to try to stick things in there. We know there are facilities guys that pay that line in the US, but they are, they are charged by ride to go out and do a thorough inspection from top to bottom, every crevice, every. Understood. Every and, and frankly, I think the taxpayers would applaud uh, us and the, collectively the town that we're, we're able to identify all of these things that need to be done and, you know, check off. We did this. We did this. We painted. We did this. We did this in-house. I, I, would, I would agree with that, okay, because we do need to stay on top of these things. We've, I've been sitting up here over the last several years. The, we've been yelling at you about how there has been a lack of maintenance in some areas mm -hmm. well if we have a program like this that identifies this list as your punch list it's something that we should continue to have going through the years so you know this is a good program yeah. okay but Mrs. Let, Santos, let, let's I just i don't want to offend you with this or you know our senior citizens in the community again it is a list just like you make a list in your house of things that need to be done you know, the roof, you, I need to paint the, you know, I need to wallpaper, I need to do that. that that's what this serves for, for a school system. Uh, you Please don't be offended by Excuse that, me. and I don't want to okay. offend our senior citizens in the community. You are. You are offended. So, okay. I, I just want to understand. C Council Flynn. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I just want to make sure that I understand w this document and the stage one submission. Did I hear correctly? The stage one submission is three pieces. It's the letter of intent, it is this deficiencies list that is required, and it's a letter from Mr. Loker or Laker? Locker. Three things, they are required, and that's where this came from, and that's why it exists. Right? Can I, can I jump in and modify that? Just I'm gonna, I'm gonna give that a little <laughs> tweak, because okay. it's mostly uh -oh. correct, but I don't ever like leaving anything hanging that isn't totally correct. So stage one essentially is a compil compilation of all of those things plus some just baseline information about the district. So we're gonna talk about the education that's provided to all of your students. We're gonna talk about what the current enrollments are. We're going to be giving the state some baseline data. So when they're looking at the preliminary list of things that we feel that may need to be done at some point, they have context, right? And so the, the package ends up being actually 
quite large because it's 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 basically a, a data dra driven submission. But I, I think the heart or the root of the question is really because we're talking about an approval and a sign off from town council for September. What are you really signing off on, and what does that mean? It, it, and and I think um, we heard we, we you know we don't want to feel rushed, and we want to make sure that we're really in line with what it is you're putting forward. Um, and I, I can assure you that you are and you will be. And the reason I'm so confident of that is because really, the only thing that you are signing off for, for with that letter of intent is we'd like to enter this process with the Department of Ed to the possibility that the state may want to give us money to help us do some things. And that basically is all you are supporting at this point. And so really it's just a We'd like to enter the program. We'd like to be considered for state funding. We'll be giving you more information as we go. Okay. Mrs. Von Villas. I, I'm just wondering if you can put like a title on that page. Like for example, if you, I don't know if you can do it, but if you could call it like addendum, current existing issues. Do you know what I mean? So that it's very clear that it's not something that you're looking for. It's to your submission will we will in general clean it up in the way that you've all expressed I, I think these comments are excellent they're important um, I agree that we need the largest contingent of residents and voters to support you and us as we take this journey and so so yes we will we will find a way to address everything we've heard this evening. okay can I just add one other thing it's the state building authority who's going to approve this. It's not RIDE. Yeah. RIDE is providing the recommendation to it. It's the state building authority who decides whether we can sure. proceed on. I think the other thing to keep in mind is that stage one, we're just identifying our needs. The work is in stage two where we develop our solution. That's where the rubber's going to meet the road. Okay. I have one question, Mr. President. Yes, ma'am. May I ask when this was developed? When did they come down and do whatever? Uh, during the month of July. This July? Yes. So why weren't the light fix fixtures changed? Why wasn't the tree tra trims, <laughs> trees trimmed? Why wait for this report to have that done? Thank you. That's all I've got to say. Okay. okay. Why not call it existing conditions as of July such and such? That's okay. Right. right. Um, okay. They, they're going to clean it up. Uh, Vice President. Thanks. Uh, just two questions. One of them is, so as far as stage one goes, the only thing that's left is council approval. Is that correct? More or less. So the team is continuing to compile all of the documents so that they're ready to go. Okay. The only thing left that we're asking of this body is council approval. And again, really, that is just that you're entering the process, potentially seeking funding. And I, and I understand and that. And the, the school committee needs to approve it as well. OK. So we, we will have a special meeting to do that. All right. So part of the, the process for stage one and I'm going to summarize, it just says that you have to provide this list, and then you have to show over the last three years your maintenance records, your plans, and everything that shows that you have been keeping up with this. So when I look at this list and I read that verbiage, I would say, is that going to fly? So I guess what I would say about that, because because um, and 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 we seem to be a little bit hyper focused on some of the things that seem like they would be easier lifts. And but they're on the list, right? right. I, I understand that the list is inclusive of every little thing we need to cut the grass. Sure. I get it. Yeah. But it's there, and you have to say that we've been keeping up with it, and now we need help. Yeah, and and I think councilman, the the way in which you show you've been keeping up with it, and and that you're committed to making the investments that are are providing the data in terms of what you've been doing with the current bond and spend down on that because yes there are some little things that absolutely need to be addressed and should be and, and I think that's frankly a fair comment um, 
but a, another regulation from the state is that year over year, you're able to prove <coughs> maintenance of effort that is associated with the targets. And if you are not meeting those, you start to become penalized by the state where they withhold the funding. And so we show that there is long-term commitment. Perhaps we have to, you know, say, oh, you know, maybe we, we could have handled this one by now. And so mea culpa, if you will, on, on some of those items. But I think in terms of proving to the state that you're invested, really you've already done that in terms of the $10 million bond and the process you've, you've, you've made to date on some of the, the, the larger improvements, if you will. In terms of the justification right. to the state. All right, that was one. And the second one is that, uh, and what Doug was saying, and I agree, the meet is in between now and, and, uh, okay. and February. So that sounds like a, a lot of work to take, pick out of there, try to associate some cost, and turn it into priorities, and get it ready for stage two. Is that possible? Well, it is possible. I, I, you know, we know it's possible but it definitely requires a collaborative, coordinated effort. You know, it's just, we can't, we can't afford to take detours during that period of time. So worst case, we don't get there by stage two, at least, at least you do a lot of the legwork. Yeah. All right, I mean, I, I it, it just is a, a monumental task. I mean, that's, that's a lot to do, but uh, I'm game. Okay, um, so I have some questions. So I just want to be clear on the reimbursement. So it starts at 35%, correct? Yes. Okay, so with a potential of an additional 17% for a total of 52%. Uh, 17 and a half. Seven, yep. So 52 and a half percent. Who's yes. counting? Right. But, but, but that's, hey, that half a percent equals some dollars, it right? It does. So, but you're saying the last five of that is very difficult to attain, potentially. Yeah, I would say the last seven and a half is difficult to obtain. The first 10 is fairly easy, um, and I would argue that we, we can nearly commit that you would receive that. 45% is what you're saying. We, I, I, would, we would achieve a minimum of 45%. I, I do believe we so. We just don't know what that is in dollars because we don't know what, what okay. Right. right, and it also so. obviously Now, is, is that guaranteed? So what we've been able to do in other districts with the submission of these materials is cite the regulation and the legislation that says something like the following. Assuming we comply with what we've told you we are going to do, we, we know that we have met, met the requirements of these bonus points, and so we would like you to return to us confirmation that you agree and intend to fund us at that level. We have had some success getting that confirmation back from the state. Technically, they certify at the end after the projects are completed. And so typically, for purposes of safety, when we're talking to your financial advisor and bond counsel, we assume the minimum threshold. I think that's an important starting place because ultimately people are gonna wonder about what the potential tax impact is but we also want to be able to say that very likely we can plan to do much, much better because we're talking about 10% right out of the gate. So your financial advisor and town administrator will be able to look at both models. Um, I, I, I don't want to cut you off, but I think you're missing my question. Yep. It's a no. Is it the, even the 35% guaranteed? The 35% is, is... Because I've seen the state do some funny things over the years. Sure. The, okay, I, I get it. I, I see where the question is coming from. So what I can say about that is, to the best of my knowledge, while this is subject to the state budget, I am not aware of the state ever kind of pulling back on their commitment to school construction once it's out there. There was a moratorium for a while, and so school projects couldn't be put forward. But in terms of your essentially in entitlement in this program, this, the state has never reneged on that, and I don't see any okay. reason why they would. Okay. So are all these ride, are, are the ride requirements tied to the reimbursement? Is that what this is, is about? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, what does the educational planner do? Because 
If we're going to focus on health and safety first, and we look at those dollars and it's, wow, or it's not, and then you can include some educational improvements, what, what does that person do? Uh, well, part because of... Because their vision of what? The educational planner really listens to the community, part of this visioning committee, about 44 members, we do want more, about what, uh, and teachers are on this committee as well needed for a teaching in the 21st century, like collaborative groups, uh, centers uh, similar to Forest Avenue and uh, uh, um, Gaudet School, uh, new labs, a bump out for our career pathway. You know, those are the th themes that are emerging. So he takes those ideas and will work with our architect to do some conceptual drawings, and, and it would be part of the plan when we go forward with a, a, a phase two. Is that and a ride requirement? Yeah, yes. Okay. So you said the priorities, first of all, is the capital, right? The health and safety, the capital for the health and safety. Yes, and, and, then get, and get the bonus. You want, you want to at least have s several uh, educational enhancement uh, projects in and that's the 10 percent you're referring to right to get to the 10 percent and then okay. what we might what stays off the table in terms of the deficiencies or health and safety we've identified them for the capital our five-year capital improvement so that when you as a council take a look at our five-year plan and capital improvement we have it staged out by year what projects that are not part of the bond that we would want to cover in a capital improvement plan. Okay. Um, so you mentioned, and you and I had talked on the phone a couple of weeks ago about the you partnering with the old Newport Athletic Club for auditorium. And I understand why you would do that, want to do that. I always, I always think if we can if we can get a cost on what it would be, we can control what we can control. Because you don't know what that partnership could be in five, ten years down the road. Mm -hmm. So they could just say, hey, you know what, we're taking a different direction. Or they could sell the building or whatever. And then if we decide to do something then, it's going to be a lot more expensive. So I would just like to see what a cost would be um, with an auditorium. But if we're going to do this, I mean, I would like to see what the potentials are, and then we can prioritize and say, you know what, that's that's way too much. We, you're right. We got to cut that out. Maybe somewhere else down the road. But oh yes, it could. Um, however, and and so I, I would like to see that because I just for, just for the reason stated, I, I think we can control what we should, can control. But when I look at these things, I just want to make sure that. And, and I'm, a little, I'm a little bit excited about this. Um, I, I, you know, I don't see any reason why not to go forward with stage one. That's just my opinion. It can't hurt to talk, right, about this. Um, and it's just us. It's not other communities. It's just us. So having said that, something's going to have to be done, right? So the longer we wait, the more it costs. And the longer we wait, Potentially, the burdens on less and less people as we become more and more of a second home community, right? So we need to look at those things, those some of those things that may be hidden that we can educate the the public on. Okay. Having said that, um, you know, it's, to me, it's always nice versus necessary. Um, Isn't it the other way around? Necessary versus nice. You're right. Thank you. <laughs> I'm thinking ahead. So what I would really like to do is I'd, I'd really like to, and I think part of Charlie and, and, and Ed, what you guys should do as part of your group is maybe I'd like to see some of these things myself. You know, uh, So I would like a tour of, the, of what we're talking about. I know we've done it years back. I'd like to see it now, because you're right. I was in the high school Monday evening for that freshman orientation, and you see shiny floors and you see clean rooms and clean facilities, and you're like, you know, we had gotten an email from a resident that said, 
and we all got it, and it said, Middletown's high school is one step away from where Rogers is. And I, I, I mean, when I look at the surface, I, say, you, I said to myself, that's way off base. Um, but when you see with your own two eyes, maybe you have a different perspective. So I think maybe that's, you have some type of open house, you have some type of meeting there at the facilities where you invite the public and advertise for that and come see for yourselves. You know, once the, once the plan gets to stage two, if it gets that far, which I don't see why it wouldn't, but I'm just one person, um, you know, once those things are identified, then you, because I think people are very visual. What am I going to get here? What are we doing? Why? What's the real need? When you see it with your eyes, it's a lot different than when you just hear it. Oh, they're asking for money again. You know, I mean, there's a big difference there. Mm -hmm. You know, so, um, you know, it's like when you hire a contractor for your own home and you say, I want to replace this, and they start opening it up and go, well, we're going to stop right here because here's what's really underneath. And here's what really could be. And if you don't do it, this is what's going to be down the road, just letting you know. Whether you do it or, do it or not, that's up to you. So, um, but I do want to say my long-term concern is, you know, bonds are uh, help immediate needs or needs that haven't been able to be taken care of for whatever reasons, whether it's you know, budgeting issues or what, and that's usually what it is, right? Affordability. They fix immediate needs, but they don't solve long-term maintenance needs. And even if something, I, I think we always try and we're making decisions for years and years down the road in a lot of things we do, whether it's this or anything else. And what we need to be mindful of is if something like this does fly, what's the long-term plan to, to, to maintain it? That's more, that's just as if not more important. We're required to put so the some building committee, something like that, they go away because, you know, if this thing passes, I think that's something that me, we might need to look at. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but there has to be, and you and I had the discussion of revenue. There has to be, and I, I know some councilors have some ideas with revenue coming forward. Once we get more of an idea of what this cost is in stage phase two or phase three, then we can start putting together, you know, <laughs> questions to Sean like, you know, what debt is retiring? Our police station is, I don't know, we, we pulled that bond in 2006. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we're getting close-er to paying that off. Um, you know, what are, the, what, are the, what are the retired debt is coming forward that may be able to help us with something like this? Now, some of the questions about reimbursement are, where, where does that reimbursement money go? Does it go to pay off this debt? Or where does that land? Because that's important to know. Certainly in my decision going forward, if it go, goes back to the school to do something else, that doesn't fly with me. If it goes back to help paying this <laughs> debt off, that's, that's where it should go. And I'm not sure. That's what it does. Okay. It does. Okay. It pays down your debt. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you sign that and send that to me, please? <laughs> Um. <laughs> yeah. This, that's the standard way it's structured. There's yeah. nothing special about it. it. Yeah. So it's those types of things that we need to look at and think about. Um, but again, if we're not unified, once we once that decision is made, I mean, we can disagree on certain things at the end of the day. But we need to look at what's best for the community as a whole, Absolutely. not what my personal opinion or I want, or you may want or not want. That's not what it's about. It's about. And I'm not saying that's what it is. I just want to make sure that's out there on the table. Yeah. You took my closing statement. Which <laughs> I read it. I got a copy of it before you. No, yeah, sure. You got those notes, which really says we need to be together on this a yeah. coalition of Middletown yeah. to do uh, to do the right thing for our path forward for our town. We have One last thing, and this is not certainly not a dig. I've always said it, whether it was we were talking about unification or we were talking about any type of money we put towards the schools or anything we do. Just because you build new or improve new buildings, improve old buildings, or improve 21st century education, the results for, the, for me and the average person is our, our, 
are our grades going to go up? Are our kids getting a better education? Yes, we have to make sure we provide a safe and health, health and safety number one. Roof over the head, safe, good ventilation, all that stuff. The educational piece is, is there going to be better results? Just because you build a new building or, and I'm not saying we're building a new building, let me take, let me retract that statement. <laughs> Just because we improve our facilities, are we going to get a better education? That's what, because I think we have a great education, and this is just my opinion, and what, what other people have said to me in our elementary schools. I think where we're at, at the high school and up, I think that's where we really need to focus. And I think what I saw the other night from the principal of that, Dr. Heath, um, I think we're heading certainly in the right direction under his leadership. So that's my spiel for tonight. Does any councils have any further any further questions? And Can I just add one more thing? Yes. Paul, please. Um, I just want to comment. That's exactly why the Ro Rosemary had said things about the labs, you know, improving our labs. Because of our Project Lead the Way program and the biomedical, those science labs and the, those improvements of those labs are going to really enhance that program and potentially other science programs that we could bring into our school for PLPWs, which bring students into our building to get an education under our, no. in our district at the high school. So that, and especially since we do have the biomedical now in the school, now it's just the beginning stages of, you know, they're, because they're not at the higher levels yet, but it is very exciting that we had that. And then Lee at, at a meeting the other day came in from a state meeting that she attended, talking about marine bi biology potential pathways. So those are things that, I mean, here we have it on our shores. We could bring something like that, that kind of pathway into our district, which would just be phenomenal. Again, pre preparing the facilities to be able to house a program like that and provide our students an education in a pathway is for a you know, career or college readiness is, is a very exciting thing. That's the goal, is to make our high school, our middle school, the open, the segue to it, and then our high school really preparing our students for college and career. Yeah, and I, I don't know what the plans are, but I know there was some talk of, and I'm glad you brought that up, Teresa, because I know, I think at the last meeting, uh, Charlie, when you came forward with this, was um, talk of maybe some type of um, facilities or improvements within the trade areas, mm -hmm. because that's, you know, I mean, that's, that's where a lot of, I know, selfishly, I know that's, m my son is, is, is will, will go towards, at least that's what he's, his, his abilities right now are, um, he's very interested in stuff like that. And I think, you know, in, in, when, when George Bush, the younger Bush was the president, I think the No Child Left Behind Act was, and the intentions were good, but I think there were some unintended consequences with every kid going to college. And, and that's just, we realize now that's not the case. We can all be Monday morning quarterbacks, right? That's not the case. It's more of, you try and get an electrician, plumber, or any type of trade now, you know, it's great money for those folks, and they deserve it because they work hard, but you can't get them. So. So those are the kinds of facility enhancements that we would be able, you know, that, that the goal that we'd be working towards, not necessarily in this particular process, but again, enhancing the building to set up those kinds of programs, because you're right, not all students are college, they are college um, bound. But we do need those other careers because it's important. You need mechanics. You need the, you know, the electrical and the plumbing. So those are things that we'd be able to set up. And maybe if maybe maybe someone would partner with us for an auditorium. You never know. I don't know if that would fall under these ride requirements, but you never know. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Mr. Roberts. Yes. Um, so yeah, I you know hearing a lot of this, I I hear what you're saying, Ms. Santos, too, as well. Like I think we need to reach out to more people, get their input. I think the schools, in my opinion, should be the center of our community, and we should welcome the community into our schools as much as we can, doing it safely. Um, I think you know we have a lot of information we presented to you. We can offer up more. Anything you need, if you want tours before Tuesday's meeting, town council meeting, let us know. Um, 
the whole ride application. I've sent links, but we can provide that to you as well if you if you want to dive more into that that whole process. But you know, I, we we just ask that you um, you know consider this letter of intent, vote it on Tuesday, and and hopefully it vote in approval so we can at least get in the game, and and you know take advantage of this opportunity that may not be there forever. So, um, thank you, Charlie um, and Ed, and the committee, and and the school. Um, uh, administration the department and school committee but I think the uh, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly not looking for a tour before the next council meeting um, sometime between September and, and February yeah would like to be able to you know get my eyes on exactly I mean you can look at it and and say well okay but when you sometimes when you see it and explain to you it's it's a different story so yep we we want to be as transparent as possible with you. I, I, I'm sure you do. So uh, any yeah. any questions you have, reach out over the weekend, whatever. We're we're here to, to okay. answer. Okay. I, I, I just want to be clear. Uh, school committee hasn't voted on the stage one yet. Uh, our school committee hasn't voted on the stage one yet. We will have a special meeting for that. So the other piece is you've heard all the elements that go together for a report to submit for stage one. We're still piecing those together. Um, certainly if you wanted to vote on a stage one without that full document on, on Tuesday, trusting all the things that you've heard, we would put that together. That would be appreciated. But also that's why I mentioned to you a special meeting for the town council so you could really see the whole packet together. So I'm, I want to make sure we're clear. So Mr. Brown had talked to me the other day about, you know, Rosemary wants you to have a special meeting because, um, you know, everything's not in order yet. Mm -hmm. And and I, my response was, I don't want to have a special meeting until I hear what they have to say at this meeting. Mm -hmm. why, why go forward if, you know, um, if you don't like what you hear? So, having said that, can you just repeat what you were talking about? You don't have all the so what pieces. We won't have all the, um, I, I'm going to go to <clears throat> Collins yeah, to I'm, talk. <laughs> I'm happy to talk about it. So, as I was explaining. You, you look thrilled. I, I, I'm in night meetings almost every all morning, right. but, but, I, but I love it. it. It really is amazing work <laughs> to be able to support the schools across Back the state of Rhode Island. Having said that. In terms of what we're asking for, again, what Rosemary is explaining is there's quite a bit of baseline data that sets the context for the state. And so if you'd like to see what becomes a fairly large binder, likely of information complete to take the vote, then perhaps a special meeting is appropriate. But again, yeah. what really we're asking you to approve okay. is that you're entering into this program possibly seeking funding. And so if you're comfortable making that statement, because that's really what you're signing off on, then you could probably make it as part of your regular agenda. We wouldn't have the full book for you at that time. We can certainly provide it after. But, but that's you know, your decision to make. But it, it, essentially, it's just the final collection of all the datum points that we send into the state. Mrs. Von Villas. I, I just have a problem with the town council approving anything that has not already been approved by the school committee. So we, uh, we could have a special meeting on uh, Tuesday. Uh, well, we were scheduling one Friday, but we, um, well, I, I, will you be ready? Is it on the agenda? No, will, will you be ready? Because you said you had to do certain things before We the do have committee. to do certain things. The school committee would approve it, because I know, I know you would want the school committee to approve yes. it before the town council. That, that's just proper protocol. Um, we would, uh, the, we've missed the Friday date for uh, posting. So yeah. we would have to have a meeting uh, Tuesday prior to your meeting, and the school committee would be voting on um, the whole concept as well without the full package. But they've been, you know, following along with us. We do need to put those pieces together. When, when will you have the full package? Mm, we would have it by, uh, I'm going to ask Doug. our people. Doug. Huh? Doug? <laughs> Okay. 
Let me pull up the calendar. Could you could you yeah. give her the mic, please? Because I I couldn't hear what she was saying. Uh, the documents have to be submitted electronically on the fifteenth. On the fifteenth. So we typically are working putting it together, pretty close to that. But the pieces that have to be done, there really aren't that many that are left. It's primarily the educational planner piece and the overall summary from uh, Jersey Brown. So we could have it if the meeting is Tuesday. So uh, does anything in those documents change anything we talked about this no. evening? No. The okay. The kind of documents is the operating budget that's been approved. I mean, it, it's documents like that. It, just so Bride can get a sense of middle town, big picture. Okay. It's non-binding anyway, right? Nothing. Okay. But I agree with Mrs. Vonville. School committee should approve it before the council approves it. That that doesn't look good if, you know, protocol-wise. So, um, so see, we're not going to have a special meeting. You are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay. Does anybody have any further questions? How is that going? I'm, I'm, I'm unclear on the dates. So, so they're going to have a special meeting on the 7th, which is Tuesday. The holiday's Monday. Okay. So we're not meeting Monday. They're going to have that before our meeting. And, you know, we'll, we'll be aware whether they approve it or not. I'm sure they'll approve it. Um, and then when it comes to us and it's non-binding, it's just saying, hey, we want to enter into this, into this and with ride and, and see where it goes. Mr. President? Yes, ma'am. How was the school committee get, going to get yeah. on the docket when the docket has already been prepared, are we going to have a special? No, uh, there's already a docket there's, item on. There's a okay. docket Mr. item. Roberts, yep. Um, okay, from the town council. They'll have to, they'll have to uh, advertise and post their meeting, and you know, open meetings law, 48 hours, and um, mm -hmm. they'll get that on their own docket, and they approve it. Then it, Tuesday it comes to us, and we look at it, and we either approve it or we don't. Okay. Yep. We have to post tomorrow. We'll post that. Yeah. It's it's just one item that the school committee will. Is approve. it posted <laughs> yet? Stage one. No, we will okay. post. Okay. Just it. just checking. Mm -hmm. um, just okay. one more question, Paul. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I just want I you know we want to thank you. Our team wants to thank you for listening to us, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to do this. We're we, you know obviously we're excited about the possibilities uh, for our schools. And, uh, you know, I commit to you uh, that we will be doing this project, you know, hand in hand, hand in glove, whatever the, the thing, and we will provide you updates. And, you know, if, if anyone wants to sit in on the building committee so they see that process for the stage two, I think it would really be important. Uh, f so we don't go down, as Doug always says, a rabbit hole. Uh, that you, you know you know the projects that are going and you might say time out we need to do it this way this has to be collaborative and okay. thank you thank you okay. again um, okay if nobody has any further questions motion to adjourn second the motion is second to adjourn and thank you very much thank you. all in favor aye, aye. aye. okay <laughs>